Hi there! Today we're going to mix the Quiet Fire Easy Flower Dingbat font with the Easy Leaves and Stems Dingbat font and create these really cool print and cut creations that you can use on cards, t-shirts, you can customize with the name. So cool! Here's the project we're going to do in this tutorial, but there are so many things you can do with all the pieces that are in these dingbat fonts. I'm Suzanne, and I'm a calligrapher, bookbinder, and designer in the craft industry. And if you're enjoying these tutorials, please subscribe to my channel and click the like button down below. So if you've never bought a font before, go over to my profile. We're going to get the Easy Leaves and Stem Sting Bat font first. And we're going to put it in our shopping cart. Then let's go to the shopping cart and go through the checkout procedure. Now I'm pretty sure you want this for personal use, so don't click the commercial use box or you'll pay a lot more. Now I only pay zero dollars because it's my file and they know I already have it. So sorry. Don't get too excited. You'll see the price on there. Now let's go to checkout and you'll have to sign in with your password again. And because you want to install this file in your computer, you're going to need to download it into your computer and open up the zip file. You might want to save that zip file someplace where you could find it again, maybe even the desktop, or maybe you have a special folder for fonts. Next, you're going to extract those files that are zipped together and they're going to open up into the individual files that are in the folder you've used or on your desktop. Now you just need to find them again. And I have to apologize, I probably should have created a new folder for this, but I have unzipped these files into my working folder where I created the files originally. So don't let that confuse you. Double click on the file to open it up and up at the top you'll see the install button. Click that and it will go ahead and install the font on your computer. Now you do that whole process with the Easy Flowers Dingbat font as well. If you've had Silhouette Studio open while you've been doing this, you'll probably have to close it and reopen it. Somehow it doesn't seem to recognize newly installed fonts if it's open. Now let's have some fun. First we have to set up our page because we are effectively doing a print and cut. Let's whip over to the page setup and I'm already on to the registration marks panel. So I'm going to click those on and then I'm going to go to the page size and I'm going to scroll down to the letter. And there we have it set up for our project. To make our lives easier, I've created this reference PDF file that you can download for easy uh, reference. Just check below down in the description for a link to that file. Let's go over to the left hand side and pick the typeface button. And let's type in the letters that we're going to use for this project. And that's C, E, L, Q, and W. So let's highlight those and scroll up to the drop down menu for the fonts and choose QFD Easy Flowers Dingbat font. And there we are. Let's move those out of the way. Then we can right click and scroll down to ungroup and they'll all be individual elements. And now we have to grab the stems and leaves. And I've decided I want to use the elements that are associated with O, V, and P. So again, I'll highlight those and choose the QFD Easy Leaves and Stems Dingbat font. Let's just right click and ungroup those elements. Then draw an elastic band around them all. And let's make them bigger. So grab the corner and pull them out. And we can do the same thing with the flower parts too. 
Now we start building. First, I'm going to take the batch of stems because we're going to build from there. Now we're going to go over to the fill panel and open that up so we can add some color to each of these elements. With that bundle of stems highlighted, let's choose a green. And there we have it. Now let's go around to the other designs and add some color to those. We can always change it later. I tested this design out before, so I know that I want to flip this over. So I can go up here to the Replicate panel and I can make a mirror image. Now I want my stem facing that way. And I'm just going to get rid of this. If I wanted to get it back again, I could just flip this piece over. The other thing I want to do is take this sprig of leaves and I want to turn it around because I want it coming out of the bouquet. And I know I want two of those sprigs, so I'm going to go back to the Replicate panel again and mirror the design. And there it is. Now I have two of them. Now let's add some color to these flowers. Again, you can change them anytime. Now let's start building this bouquet. Remember, it's so flexible. You can change the sizes, whether things are in front. You can change the colors anytime you want. So I'm going to start this way. I right clicked. I have the drop down menu. And what I've done, chosen to send all those stems to the back so that they're underneath. Now let's just move some of these flowers around and arrange them. You might have noticed that some of these designs have holes through them, so you have to be a bit careful where you place them. But I'll show you another trick shortly about how to deal with that. Now let's take this little pink flower and resize it and put it down over here. I really like this simple flower, so I'm going to click the Duplicate button as I highlight it, and then I have another one. Now I don't really want it the same color, or the same size. So let's make some changes. Now I want to move this turquoisey flower to the front, so I'm going to highlight and right click and scroll down to the bring to front. Oh good, now it's up front. Now I'm going to grab this funky little flowery thing Highlight it, right click, and send to back. Now I'd kind of like another one of these, so I'm going to highlight it, right click, duplicate, and I'm going to move it around to the other side. And I'd like that to peek out too. So again, right click, send to back, and it goes to the back. Let's make another one of these little ones. So right click, duplicate, and move it a little. Well, let's make it a bit bigger. Pop it up there. Change its color a little bit. Maybe a little smaller. See, that's the nice thing about this. You can do whatever you want. And here's the last flower we're going to deal with. I'm going to enlarge it because I want it to sit on top. And I'm going to rotate it this way and position it like that. Now, I definitely want this one to be on top. So right click, move to front, and there it is. You know what? I don't like that color. Let's change it. 
Yeah, that's better. That flower on top can look like it's stemless, so that's why I've added this extra stem. It depends on how it's positioned. You'll find out if you need it. And you might want to change the angle. You'll definitely want to send it to back. Now we have these sprigs of leaves and I'm going to change that color too because that's my favorite color. Now you're probably going to need to change the angle of those. Pull them out, push them in. That's too far in. So you can tweak to your heart's content. And then again, send back. And take the other one and place it on the other side. And you can play with it as much as you like. And then right click and send it back. It's just so much fun playing with these. You can zoom in if you want and have a closer look. Now this is where you can see those elements with holes in them will show what's behind them. But there's a way to get rid of that. You can put them over a solid piece of green or you can do this. So I'm going to take this one, I'm going to duplicate, and then I'm going to move it sideways. And again, I'm going to right click on it, go down to release compound path, and then I'm going to click on it again, and I'm going to go weld. There. Now what I can do is change the color. I want these two flowers stacked on top of each other, but I want the pale pink one to the back. So right click, send to back. Now I just need to align them perfectly. And that's easy. Draw an elastic band around the two of them so they're both highlighted. Then go up to the Align panel. Click on the Align Center and then on the Align Middle. Or the other way around if you want. And look at that, perfectly aligned. Now take the two of them and highlight them and then right click and go down to group. And then they'll stay together. Now the hole in your flower is filled with another color. And you can do that for any of these flowers that have holes in them. Like you might want to move that one over so you don't see the stem. You can always tweak the size too, sometimes that helps. And for this one, I'm going to do the duplicate. Release compound path. Weld. Change the color. Select both of them and go back and do the align. But this time I forgot to put the pale one to the back. So let's do that. Highlight on the top one, send it back. Now there's still some green poking through and that's because I haven't grouped them. Once I group those two flowers together, they'll be just fine. And see, there's the pale pink and you won't see any show through of the stems. You can continue to do that with all the other flowers, 
or just move them around so they're strategically placed. So you can tweak away until you're happy with this. And then once you've got all the bits and pieces where you want them, we can group the whole arrangement together. Once the elements are grouped together, they'll stay together, and then you can resize the whole bouquet to whatever size you want, providing it'll fit in the cut and print window. I'm going to resize this bouquet to about 4.6 inches high. I want to print it inside a cut rectangle that has rounded corners. So I'm going to go over to the left and choose that and create my rectangle around the bouquet. And once I have that the size I want it, I'm going to group both elements, the rectangle and the bouquet, and I'm going to go up to the align and I'm going to center and middle align the two elements. And then I can actually group them together and they'll stay in that orientation. To make sure it prints and cuts, make sure that the design is not in the gridded area. Then you're ready to go. Go up to the print icon up on the toolbar and that's what it's going to look like. So pretty. And you've created that from bits and pieces in two dingbat fonts. And there is so much more you can do. Once you've printed that, you'll put it on your mat and put it in the machine and then choose the appropriate paper. And now you can see here that this would cut out around the bouquet, which would be great, except I want it to cut the rectangle. So here is what you do. Instead of leaving it on the simple default setting for cutting, switch over to line and then go down and click here under the weld setting. Then only the rounded rectangle is highlighted and will cut. And here's my final bouquet printed and cut. It's not photographed very squarely, sorry about that. But now I can take it and put it on a card base and maybe add a different colored layer and play around with it a bit and then give it to somebody special. Here's a few more things you can make when you combine the different elements from the two dingbat fonts. I hope you've enjoyed making this project. We've done so much stuff. It's amazing. Thanks for joining me. If you have any questions, it's best to go to my website and fill in the contact form there, and then we have a chance that you'll actually see my reply. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again next time. Bye for now.